Let's take a look at how you'd work with functions inside of Maple. So suppose you've got Maple running, and you want to work with the function f of x equals 3x cubed plus 23x squared plus 40x minus 16. Suppose you need to compute f of 1 and f of 17. Compute f of root 2 to 10 significant digits. Factor the function f of x. And solve the function, set equal to 0. Well, the starting point for all of these problems would be to type in this function first. Now in Maple, to type the function f, you type f colon equals, that's going to define a function for you. You have to tell Maple the input value and the output. So the input value will be the variable x. The output value, we draw this little arrowhead that's hyphen greater than, will be whatever the formula is. So in this case, 3 times x cubed plus 23 times x squared plus 40 times x minus 16, and I put a semicolon. And so Maple will parrot back that for me. But now, any time I type in f of x, Maple will spit out this function, and it's in pure input-output form. If I take an input value of t, then it rewrites the equation with an output value of t. Or if I put an input value of shu, then it will write the output value in terms of shu. So it is an honest-to-goodness function. That means part a is really easy to work out. You want f of 1 and f of 17? We'll type in f of 1 and f of 17. f of 1 is 50, f of 17 is 22,050. To get f of the square root of 2, remember that to get the square root of 2 in maple, that's 2 to the 1 half power. It's probably the easiest way to write the square root of 2. Now I want to plug that into maple, so f of 2 to the power of 1 half, and I find out that the output value is 46 times the square root of 2 plus 30. Now to get a numeric approximation of that, well, one of the tricks we talked about in class is to right click on the output and to find what you're looking for on the list here. In this case, it's approximate to 10 significant digits, and so there it is. f of the square root of 2 is approximately 95.05 plus some stuff. So we've taken care of these two parts. How about factoring? Well, to factor f of x, the first thing you want to do is get a hold of f of x. And here's the output for f of x right there. Again, I'm going to right-click on the output and see if I can find what I'm looking for in the list. In fact, there it is right dead center. To factor it, I would have typed in the command factor, and I find out that f of x factors into 3x minus 1 and x plus 4 squared. I could double-check that this factoring is correct by taking this and foiling it out or expanding it out. Now, if I right-click again, then I can actually find that expand is right there. So I click at expand, and again, I get 3x cubed plus 23x squared plus 40x minus 16. So part C is answered by this. There's f of x factored. Now, what if you want to solve f of x equals 0? Well, again, the starting point would be to get a hold of the equation f of x equals 0, and then we'll right-click away. So let me type in f of x equals 0. There's that equation. I'll select it and right-click. And now, looking through my list here, at the very bottom, there's solve. So solve, solve it for the variable x. So when I click on that, I can see what the syntax in Maple is, and it's, oddly enough, solve for x. And I find that the three solutions to this are x equals one-third, x equals minus four, and x equals minus four. But I guess there's actually only two solutions, a third and negative four. And if I remembered what the factored version of f of x is, and let me just retype that again, factor f of x, the factored version was 3x minus 1 and x plus 4. If I set each of these guys equal to 0, I'd get 1 third and x equals minus 4 and minus 4. So that does, in fact, check out. And that's the very basics of programming a function and working with it in Maple.